I'm Stephen Lons with Investor Intel, and today I'm joined by Stephen Borrega, who is the CEO and president of Romeo's Gold. And uh, Steve, welcome. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's good to see you. It's great to see you again, too. So, um, you have a, a portfolio of projects. Yes. You have projects in Nevada. You have some exciting projects in British Columbia. And today we're going to talk a little bit about your tech, uh, Trek projects. So Perfect. Please, please tell me, tell me more. Okay. So as you mentioned, we have a portfolio of assets. Uh, we also have assets in Ontario, northwestern Ontario as well. So the Trek asset in particular is something that I've been very keen on talking about because it's got a size that is getting some 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 big attention. Uh, it's the type of asset that the majors would would look for as a, as a key target. And uh, location-wise, we couldn't ask for anything better. So we're right along the southern boundary of Galore Creek. For those who don't know what Galore Creek is, it's a, a massive uh, copper, uh, proposed copper mine co-owned by Tech and Newmont. Uh, it's run by a management company called GCMC. And they've actually, they've, their road intersects the, the Trek claims. So we have actually quite a big land package in British Columbia. It's about 400 square kilometers, a little bit more than that now. And Trek has been an asset that we've been working on for many years. Uh, but we're all of exactly 1.3 kilometers away from their proposed road. And in the Golden Triangle, infrastructure is everything, as you know. So their proposed mill site is about 12 kilometers down the road. And uh, we're very excited by this IP target that we shot last summer. It's, uh, it's about approximately 800, kilom 800, excuse me, 800 meters uh, long. And uh, at just below surface, it expands out to about 500 meters, and it shoots down, well, the IP shows it at 650 meters, and the MT line that we shot actually shows it going down about two kilometers. So it's a great big target for drill. Mm -hmm. Now, I was just saying, uh, you've done IP. Yes. Uh, what else have you done on it? It's, it, we've not drilled it on purpose. We're waiting, we're waiting for the right uh, partner to do so. Mm -hmm. But the surface expression of this thing was a, a very big epidote field that was over a kilometer long, overprinted by a stockworks, uh, 800 meters of stockworks. So that's a, a great indicator of what you'd typically want to see on a, in a porphyritic system at surface. Marry that with a, a overlay of, magma, uh, of magnetics, excuse me, and, uh, and, you, and you start to see that all these layers of information start to pile, the stack up and show that this, uh, this, uh, this IP target is quite substantial and quite real. So that we have done surface work, IP work, to answer your question, and next is we're drill ready, so we're, we're targeted and, and looking forward to finding the right partner to move it forward this summer. So, and it's, you know, obviously it'll depend on the partner, but uh, you know, a, a modest program, a big program, or whatever your partner is prepared to. Well, uh, exactly, make. I think we could go as big as needed, but as you know, porphyry systems are quite quite significant and, and expensive to explore. I, I think the first pass would probably be somewhere around three or four thousand meters. Maybe six to six to eight holes uh, would cover that off and uh, would probably be somewhere around a three to four million dollar work commitment to get that to accomplish that type of a program to start with. So and you clearly at this point don't know what kind of depth you're looking at but uh, how close to surface? Well in fact it, the, 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 it does come to surface. And it's, a, and it's in a, a sort of a TP formation that, 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 sh that does come up to exposure at surface. And then at 200 meters, it expands out to that 500 meter level. So it's, it's exactly what, what uh, you'd want to see as far as a, a great juicy char target would look like. So it's exciting times. And you have some big boys in the neighborhood. Of course, with, uh, with GCMC, we're in the, being in the shadow of the giant of Galore Creek. Uh, but, you know, uh, the, the neighborhood of the Golden Triangle is, is definitely a hot topic for every major right now. Certainly, it's certainly a good address. That's right. And, and I, think that, I think the majors are, are moving down the food chain in a way that I've never seen, actually. It's, uh, in my, my 16 year career, this is the first time I've, every phone call I've made has been taken. And uh, they're, not, they're not usually answering, we'll call you, don't call us again. This time they're saying, no, okay, great, let's sit down and let's have a chat. So it's exciting times. Yeah, well, the, the major's inventories are drying up. That's right. It's getting harder and harder to find things, certainly hard to find things that show at surface anymore. And like you said, with infrastructure running right through it, um, I, I imagine you're going to be popular. 
Well, I hope so. It would be nice to be the belle of the ball once. Now, and uh, you, we talked about some other projects. You have uh, some other projects in Nevada. That's right. Any updates on them? Well, we're going to be certainly working it in Nevada at some point during the 2023 season. Um, Nevada, in my opinion, should be a, will, will become a focus for Romeos. Uh, we acquired a early stage asset called Kincaid. Uh, we've done some basic ground truthing so far, and every single target we've we've identified of a former working pit trench, it's showing high copper uh, grab samples either running with high grade gold or high grade silver. It's a, it's very exciting. It appears to be an epithermal system, but it's early days yet. Uh, so we'll definitely be doing some work there. That's on the southern half of the Kincaid property. On the northern half, is we're tracking big scarn structures. So Kincaid will be very active probably starting April, May time frame. And then we also have a second asset. So forgive me, Kincaid is found in the Walker Lane District, which is in southwestern Nevada. In northwestern Nevada, uh, we have an asset which is a former producing mine. And that mine is called Scosa. Uh, average grade that came out of it was over an ounce per ton back in the 30s into the early 40s and they only ever mined down 400 feet. We think that there's a very high possibility of that mineralization continuing well beyond. They basically mined down to the water table and then they had to stop. They didn't have the technology to move on so we're excited. Nevada presents a huge potential for us and of course we'll certainly keep these conversations going on on the BC assets, on the Trek asset, and we'll look forward to telling your audience all about it as it, as it comes forward. Uh, look forward to having you back, and uh, maybe you'll have some news about, uh, about Trek when, uh, when we talk next. Perfect, I look forward to it. Thanks for coming in. Thanks so much, Stephen. Great to see you. Take care.